FlyFX fans and welcome back to another episode of Flight Tech. My name's Nathan and I'll be your captain on this journey. Buckle in, we've got a lot to show you this month. We take a look at the Vampire F.3, a vintage classic speech buggy and a quick build Ford Mustang GT 1968. We delve into the history of the de Havilland Chipmunk, our designers answer all your questions, we go to Brick with all the Airfix news and we take a look at your images. I'm Nathan, we're Airfix and this is Flight Tech. This fantastic new Vampire F.3 kit is made up of 123 pieces and is available to pre-order now. With a number of significant firsts to its name, the Vampire was the first RAF aircraft to exceed 500 miles per hour, with the extra range of the F.3 allowing this to be the first jet fighter to cross the Atlantic. The Vampire F.3s of the number 32 squadron were also the first RAF jet fighters to be deployed outside Northwest Europe and the first to operate in the higher temperatures of the Mediterranean. Without doubt, the de Havilland Vampire has to be considered one of the most important early jet fighters in the world. If you want to hear from the designer himself, our interview with vampire designer Tom is on our YouTube channel now. The link is in the description of this video. The 1967 model year Mustang was the first significant redesign of the original model. Ford's designers began drawing up a larger version even as the original was achieving sales success. In 1968 the fastback version appeared and achieved greatness via the power of Hollywood and a famed movie. Making the Mustang the must-have car of the era still a much beloved car into the next century. Airfix Quick Build is an exciting range of brick-based models suitable as an introduction to modelling for any age of 6 and up. The pre-coloured pieces simply push together to build an impressive model which can then be decorated with the included self-adhesive stickers. No paint or glue is needed to make these fantastic models look like the real thing. And once completed, there's no evidence of any of the brick fittings shown. When built, they are tough enough to be used as toys or smart enough to use as display models. Either will show off those great modelling skills. Included with each model are a full set of easy to follow colour instructions, free rolling wheels for cars and tanks and display stands for all the aircraft. Recently on social media, we asked if you had any questions for our designers, Chris and Pramjit. Let's see what they had to say. Uh, hi, I'm Chris, one of the FX designers. And Which camera are we looking at? <laughs> <laughs> Good looking. <Excuse> <laughs> the main one, far, of course. Yeah. Hi, I'm Pramjit and I'm an FX designer. Hi, and I'm Chris and I'm also an FX designer. Got some questions here today. 
we got. How long does it take to design a model overall? Uh, depends what uh, scale I think your Hellcat took about. Two, three years. Yeah, so Hellcat uh, was a year of design and then another year in engineering it through to get the moulds right. But that is obviously a big one, so that took longer than normal. Um, some okay. of the smaller ones, what, like six months? Mm, about three, four, isn't it? For 70 seconds going on, but like the starter sets only take about a few months. Some of the 70 second ones take about six, six to nine months yeah. ish. Uh, what is the gap between the new kits that are proposed to those that are put into production? Again, I guess it depends on size. So if, uh, it generally takes maybe an extra, at least six months from sort of design being finished to it uh, getting out there, maybe a bit longer even. So Yeah, because when we sign it off for tooling and it goes starts tooling, it's usually, and when it goes into the market, it's usually about a year. Yeah, so anything, that can be even longer, can't it? Yeah, sometimes. So a good, a good two to three years, I guess depending on the size of the project. Another question. What's your favorite part about the job? Uh, building the kits and going to shows. Those are my two favorites. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess being able to see something we've got to like work on with a team, but then getting to see it in the shop is really very satisfying. And then uh, seeing other people build it up and see what, what sort of creativity they're able to do with it is, is brilliant to see. That's good fun. Yeah. Another question. Can you walk me through a project? What's the general process? Um, cool. Should I go? Yeah, go on. Um, so it will start, obviously, we've got to decide uh, what we want to do, but that's sort of, a, I guess, a bit of a different question. But once we've known what project it is, what um, or aircraft or tank or whatever. We will try and get as much research as we possibly can, which can come from a variety of different sources. Um, we'll go, hopefully go visit one, take a bunch of pictures. Um, if it's possible, we'll get one 3D scanned. And so that's like collecting all the data. And then we'll start doing the CAD design, um, building up the kind of basic shape. Uh, so we get confident on that. And then once we've got the shape, we'll start to split the parts up, figure out how we can uh, get it molded um, and once we've done all the CAD work, which yeah could take anywhere from a couple of like three months to a year, uh, then we'll get a prototype made, find all the issues with that, make all those adjustments, and then after all of that process, we'll send it off to get the mould made. Um, and then that is a fair bit of back and forth once that's happened. Yeah. Um, and then eventually the plastic bit's done, but along that journey, we've still had the artwork being done, we've had the instructions being done. Um, boxes modelled up and yeah, a, a variety, loads of different parts to it, really. Uh, uh, do you snack and design? Question mark. Favourite biscuit? Question mark. Who snacks the most in the, in the group? Oh, I don't know. I thought you were going to say me. <laughs> I haven't heard much rustling recently. So. No, I eat more meals rather than snacking. <laughs> yeah, it's true, you just eat all day long. Yeah, I just eat all day long. Proper meals. Meals, yeah. And my second breakfast and then my third lunch all the yeah. days. I mean, I definitely eat all the sweet things from my lunch early in the morning. We have loads of Haribos. Yeah, too often have Haribo. Um, we yeah. used to, uh, it's a design team. <laughs> I'm not a part of this, by the way. We, at one point, um, created up a, a spreadsheet to analyse the favourite biscuits. Um, all done in lunchtime hours, obviously. Uh, and so from that, I should say that uh, Golden Crunch Creams are the best biscuit. If you could design any model and not worry about commercial pressure, what would it be and why? Mm. <laughs> I know which one, you know which one I'm going to go for. Yeah. Uh, not worry about... Oh. All right, you go first one, I think. A 1350 Queen Elizabeth Colossus Carrier. You, did you how, know big, how big? How big? How you, big is it? How big do you think that should be? It's about that big. Nice. It's that big, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, that's probably my favourite one because I love building ships, as you know, I've brought in quite a few over the years. Yeah. Um, that's how I sort of got back into the hobby, uh, building ships. And yeah, that will be the one I would want to do just because I enjoy doing it. With that or the new Gerald Ard 4 class carrier because no one does one yet. Same with the Queen Elizabeth. I know it's quite similar to the Nimitz class, 
but that will probably be uh, Queen, Queen Elizabeth class first, then the Gerald Ard Ford. But it's just the Gerald Ard one is a lot bigger. Yeah, Ford class carrier. It's a lot bigger. It'd be fun to do a 48th Vulcan. Just be absolutely massive. It just look, look the same. Though. <laughs> <laughs> it just look, like just look the same, gone. but closer. <laughs> uh, what is your favourite airfix kit? And it doesn't have to be whether you designed it or anything like that. Just what is, what is your favourite one? Oh, I think. Um, well, I'm going to take two questions. I think probably my the thing I get most joy out of is the Mary Rose little one to four hundred. I think it's, uh, it was one of my first kits, but I, I still, I love it. It's a great little thing. Um, it's coming out of the starter set as well. Yep, coming back out again as a starter set. Uh, and then a kit that I think looks amazing, really cool, is the Walrus I've got. Oh, really? Um, I think it's quite wasn't, a fun... Wasn't expecting you to say that. No, I just think it's, well, it's a really interesting subject, I thought. Uh, and I really like the look of the kit. Nice. So. What's your, uh, what's your favourite one that you've designed? Other than Mary Rose. Other than Mary Rose. Because yeah. uh, I've got three in my head that I know that you like, or four, <laughs> so it's quite hard. I, I, really, I, I guess I, one of the ones I think I had the most pleasure of, of designing, and then probably like it, is, is the B17. Um, but, but yeah, but then I, I, the kit that I actually really like the look of at the end of it was a 48th Defiant uh, out of the ones that I've done. I really mm. enjoy that. I think it looks cool. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking you were probably going to say something like the Vulcan or Hellcat. Yeah. Nah, I don't. I mean, they're they're like I guess supposedly impressive, but they're not my favourite. Yeah, in terms of yeah, I get what you mean. Mm. Um, my favourite airfix kit. Mm. One I enjoyed building quite a bit was, as in the painting stages of it, was one of the P fifty ones where I done the blue nose. That was pretty cool. Mm. Really enjoyed that. Doing the Vulcan for the first time during test shots, that was pretty cool. I remember when we were in lockdown, I was calling you saying, oh yeah, uh, try this out, or oh, maybe this yeah. is, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. that was last year. Um, Ran out of paint, I feel like for that. <laughs> I think I did, yeah. <laughs> um, Hellcat was probably one of my favorite. I mean, that was just when I first started. And I think that was just when I, just took one home and started building mm. it and then you guys saw... Was it was your building. favourite because you got to do it for free? Was that why? <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually did enjoy that. I mean, yeah, remember I done the stands as well? Yeah, stands. That, was that, was good. Really cool. that was a good project. That was a nice one. And then I've done the pilots. I took the pilots out from the 24 scale Typhoon mm. and put them in there and then done an in-flight pose. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was brilliant. And having the engine and everything, doing that for the first and second and third, fourth time was yeah. quite fun. <laughs> Nice. They were pretty cool. I mean, like, yeah, that was. Um, I think most people have said that one they're doing the engine is quite a. It's like a mini kit in itself, and it's quite enjoyable. Mm. But I've done so many kits, as in airfix kits. Um, V17 was pretty cool, just done recently. It's very milk, kind. Milk wipe. Don't, you don't just have to say my ones. It's fine. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I like the scheme rather than the aircraft, uh, okay. so, as in the, de the design of the, it. The design's yeah, rubbish. Yeah, the, design's the, rubbish. <laughs> the design isn't that great. You could have done a bit better, to be honest. Um, but I like the colour scheme I chose, so technically, <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with you. <laughs> but no, P17 uh, was pretty cool. Um, in terms of like the ones I like looking at are those ones, sort of thing. In terms of when you're, it's, you know, the ones that are good or the ones that you look at in a few years' time, and you're like, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Still like it. Yeah. When you still like it after a few years, then you mm. know it's pretty good. Yeah, it's been good fun. Thanks for all your questions. Yeah, thank you. Um, feel free to ask some more. Maybe we'll do another one of these again soon. But it's been great. Cool. Take care. That's all we have time for from Paraget and Chris in this video. However, we will be releasing an extended version on the YouTube channel in the coming weeks. So subscribe if you'd like to know the guy's tea dipping technique.
The first chipmunk took the skies in May 1946 and almost immediately gained interest from the military. By April 1948, the Royal Canadian Air Force had taken delivery of their first chipmunk, but they were not the only ones admiring the qualities of the extremely capable aeroplane. The vast majority of the 1,283 de Havilland chipmunks built would be manufactured under licence in the UK, in factories at Hatfield and Chester, with around 735 of these going on to see service with the Royal Air Force. In RAF service, the British built machines were known as the Havilland Chipmunk Mark 10, and they would go on to provide basic flight training support for many thousands of future military aviators, in addition to providing air experience opportunities for many more as part of the University Air Squadron organisation. The Chipmunk has become one of the most recognisable Royal Air Force aircraft of the post-war era, and has enjoyed a military career which began in the early 1950s and continues to this day. With such an impressive military pedigree as this, it's also interesting to note that the Chipmunk has gone on to become one of the most popular aircraft types on the civilian aviation scene, and it is estimated that while over 300 aircraft are still in airworthy condition worldwide, sometimes unfairly described as the poor man's Spitfire, the Chipmunk surely now has to be regarded as a historic aircraft in its own right, and one which continues to underline the effectiveness of its design. With aircraft formerly serving with the RAF, Army Air Corps, Royal Navy and the mount of several RAF display teams, there is no shortage of attractive schemes available for you to present your chipmunk in if you are lucky enough to own one. Also known as dune buggies, beach buggies are an integral piece of American counterculture and surfing culture of the 1960s. Often based upon VW Beetle platforms, these air-cooled rockets are super fun on the open beaches or twisty roads. perfect for exploring the terrain with the wind in your hair. This vintage classic from Airfix is a great throwback to a time of sand, sea and surf. Now over to Brooke with the news. Hi there, I'm Brooke and recently joined the team here at Airfix. I work behind the scenes in the digital community, so let's take a look at what we've been up to in the Airfix world. Ready to be stripped for paint, Hornby Hobby's recent pride, the newly acquired Hawker Hunter now sits protected in its hangar close to Airfix headquarters. Purchased by our very own Lyndon Davies, CEO of Hornby, this iconic aircraft is a special tribute honouring the lives of employees who sadly passed and their families. Davies told the Yorkshire Post, I bought it personally, privately and will donate it to the company after logging the winning bid. Over the past year, we've lost quite a few people, not just because of COVID, but for various reasons, and it's going to be in memory of them. Now sheltered by a heavy duty sheet, the Hunter is in its first phase of an exciting restoration process. Once stripped, the aircraft will be sanded and smoothed when it will be ready to be painted and restored to its former glory. And what a beauty she will be. Once restored, this high profile aviation classic will be under the care of the RAF Munster Museum team. The exact location is yet to be confirmed. We've been on the hunt for a wheel for our hunter and we're pleased to say we've found one. Our Airfix, sorry, Scarefix competition ended on Halloween, 31st of October. We offered one lucky winner the chance to win a free 40 second scale Bolton Pool Defiant Mark 1. To make sure you don't miss out on another one of our competitions, make sure to follow all our social media pages, including our new TikTok. You may have spotted us in Horby's Mind the Gap event in Aid of Mind. The donation page is still up and running, so head over if you fancy supporting their great cause. We're fast approaching 2022 and it will see exciting developments for the Airfix Club. We recently announced the new exclusive kit available for members, the BAE Hawk XX14, first and last. Two Hawk T Mark 1s in one box. Delve into their history as you build these limited edition 70 second scale models available on sign up or renewal of your membership from the beginning of February, along with many exciting perks, including the much desired red box containing your exclusive kit, 
welcome letter, keep calm poster, flying hours passport, and brand new remove before assembly flight tags. Plus 10% discount of all kits at airfix.com, club magazines, exclusive products, competitions, and member only experiences. This past month, the team has been reviewing your fantastic model shots for the Airfix Club calendar. It will be a hard pick this year. Don't forget, you can still send in your model shots to marketing at airfix.com. That's all from Airfix News this time. I'll pass you back to Nathan to take a look at some of your fantastic model shots. Thanks, Brooke. Now let's take a look at some of your images from the last month. I hope you enjoyed this new episode of Flight Deck. As always, please leave any ideas or suggestions you may have for future Flight Decks in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Nathan, over and out.